How much facial rejuvenation do you think is possible in a patient with this severity of facial aging? Let's find out today on Aesthetic Minutes Clinical Vignettes. Hi, welcome to Aesthetic Minutes Clinical Vignettes. On today's case, we have a 69-year-old female with severe facial aging interested in total facial rejuvenation. Let's begin with our clinical assessment of two of the major facial aging components in this patient, loss of skin quality and severe tissue laxity. In terms of skin quality, on immediate analysis, it's clear that this patient has severe aging of the face with significant dermatoheliosis or photoaging of the skin due to the effects of chronic sun exposure as well as intrinsic hereditary aging due to genetics. The underlying process responsible for these skin changes is known as actinic dermal elastosis and it's characterized by degenerative changes in the skin structure in which an erratic jumble deposition of a large amount of elastic fibers and glycosaminoglycans occurs within the dermis resulting in skin that is inelastic, thickened and discolored. Elastotic skin is characterized by severe facial wrinkles, known as facial rhytidosis, as well as thickening and yellowing of the facial skin, known medically as post-citrine. This patient has extensive static rhytid formation in the forehead, crow's feet area, lateral cheek and jowl, and the entire neck. In addition, there is also hyperpigmentation or darkening of the skin due to the formation of multiple age spots, known medically as solar lentigenes. Management of these aging-related skin issues relied on using a strong ablative fractional laser to resurface or peel the skin. The Luminous Ultra Pulse Fractional Carbon Dioxide Laser was chosen for its power and strong thermal ablation of tissues. It simultaneously peels the damaged epidermis and induces remodeling of the papillary and superficial reticular layers of the dermis, which aids in tightening and smoothing the skin. A laser skin resurfacing can be very effective at restoring the youthfulness and uniformity of the skin. However, if there is significant tissue laxity, such as in this patient, then it must also be addressed in order to achieve a maximal result. Let's take a look at this second component of facial aging, tissue laxity. In this case, it's clear that this patient has significant ptosis or droopiness of facial tissues in all segments of the face and neck, which is not unusual given her age. Addressing the sagging of the facial tissues requires a facelift, but choosing the correct facelift procedure is important for a natural result. We can essentially break down the face into four regions when considering the type of facelift techniques to employ, the upper face, mid face, lower face, and neck. At 69 years of age, this patient demonstrates moderate severe aging of the lower face with severe laxity, wrinkle formation, and loss of definition of the jawline due to the formation of the jowl. Moderate severe aging of the lower face is primarily addressed with a facelift surgery, and essentially all facelift types are effective at addressing the sagging of the lower face. The mid face in this patient also shows severe aging, which presents with flattening of the cheek, hollowing below the lower eyelids, worsening of the nasolabial fold, and additional compounding of the jowl. Because mid facial aging exists in this patient, we need an extended facelift technique to properly lift the cheek. The two main facelift types that achieve this are the deep plane facelift introduced by Dr. Hamra and the high mass facelift developed by Dr. Barton. And if you'd like to learn more about them, you can watch my video on that subject. In this patient, the high mass technique was chosen because it not only allows for adequate mobilization of the cheek, but also permits the further separation of the skin from the muscle layer, letting the muscle layer be lifted vertically upwards while the skin is redraped posteriorly. This is known as the bilamellar high mass facelift popularized by Martin and it maximizes the lifting of the cheek without distortion of the natural grain of the facial skin, resulting in a more natural result in this patient. This patient has severe aging of the anterior neck, evidenced by the blunting of the cervical mental angle and extreme laxity of the anterior neck tissues. Although all facelifting techniques will improve the neck, patients with severe neck aging are essentially carrying too much baggage in the anterior neck including excess fat and loose muscle and connective tissue. To address this severe type of neck aging, the facelift technique must be expanded to include an anterior platysmoplasty, which removes the excess loose tissue and retightens the platysma muscle to achieve a sharper, more contour neck angle. To learn more about all of the surgical techniques available to improve the neck, feel free to watch my video on that subject. The upper face in this patient also shows moderate severe aging. In this patient, there is significant ptosis of the brow as well as severe laxity and wrinkle formation in the lateral orbit and cheek. Because of the sagging of the brow tissues, the forehead muscle that lifts the brow, called the frontalis muscle, becomes chronically contracted in an attempt to keep the brows in place. 
This is known as frontalis dependency and over decades can result in deeply etched forehead creases. There are many ways in which to lift the brow surgically and if you'd like to review them, feel free to watch my video on that topic. Given this patient's features, the endoscopic assisted biplanar trachophytic brow lift technique was chosen. This technique provides for an extremely powerful and complete rejuvenation of the upper face. A third component of aging of the face, volume loss, is also of significance in this patient and a recommendation was given for future volume restoration with filler to the cheeks, tear troughs, lips, jawline and to soften the nasolabial folds after the surgery. The total facial rejuvenation recommendations for this patient therefore consisted of the following. A bilamellar high mass facelift, an anterior platysmal plication, a bilamellar endoscopic assisted trichophytic brow lift, a fractional CO2 laser skin resurfacing of the face, and a facial volume correction with filler. This patient made the decision to proceed with the surgical and laser recommendations as outlined and to defer any filler treatments to a later future. She underwent the procedure as planned, which typically requires five to six hours of surgical time and necessitates at least one month before beginning to look her best. Remember, severe facial aging requires more work. And in the end, the goal is a great natural result. So always plan ahead. A great result takes time. Here are this patient's results six months post-procedure.